Hey, buggies, I am your friendly internet bug, Jester Jerama. So, you might be asking yourself, wait, did he get a haircut? Yes, I did. And if you might want to look at these little quick before photos, you will see that my hair was down to the middle of my back. And that is a personal record. And having that much hair, it takes mm, a decent amount of maintenance. So, in my day-to-day -day life, I needed to go with something a bit more low maintenance and something a bit more stylable because with my long hair, it was either have this whole part be really long and, you know, lengthy, or just have everything in a ponytail. And there's nothing wrong with having long hair, that's why I had long hair, because I just loved having long hair. But I kind of missed having this whole swoop I had going on my hair. I mean, just look at that. It just looks so nice. It just looks wavy, smooth, feathery, very nice. I like it, you can tell, probably. <laughs> Anyways, there is some new content to be heard in this just another update so please watch through to the end to hear updates on what is going on online and offline so you might recall that I said I was unemployed well while it might technically in a way be true I am currently working for uber through their uber eats service so what that means is I come from my house, I get out of my house, apartment, whatever you want to call it, I go bing online through the app from Uber, and I get a little bing, and it'll say, hey, you have a delivery over here, so and so many minutes away. I tap accept, and I drive over, pick up the food, and whoop, I go right over to whomever had ordered the food. And I will say, I was expecting to make less than what I am actually making. What I'm actually making is, and this depends on if I'm more active during the day, I'm making 15 plus dollars an hour. But I still, of course, have to pay for my own gas. And mileage isn't always picked up on, but I should probably look into what I can do about my mileage for my tax return. Okay, that's something else adult, but... Anyways, Uber Eats has actually been pretty good for me. It's flexible, and the payments are reasonable. So if I work part-time to full-time, I make enough at, to meet what, my, what I need for my bills and, well, rent. But I do need to work for the rest of the month in order to make what I need because I haven't been delivering uh, that much for the earlier half of the month. And that was because I was trying to balance out everything and get a feel for stuff. So I was trying to get a feel for my content, streams, and doing this work, and doing help and errands and everything like that. So there was a lot that was going on and I was trying to work it out. But um, January was the month I did get right on to uber and if you too want to deliver for uber if you want to do uber eats you are not held to the year requirements for your car nor is your car needing to be inspected by one of the uber employees so if you were doing uber ride sharing though your car would have to be inspected and pass and be of the appropriate year and maintenance to be a ride-sharing car. But if you have something that might be a little bit rusty, there's a chance then you can deliver for Uber Eats. But you have to, of course, keep your car maintained for your own uh, sake and uh, pump your gas. But I would also recommend to you uh, checking in mileage, checking in about mileage and how that'll affect your tax return since your car is technically being used for work. But I do want to move on to mental health because 
my mental health with my with my depression and anxiety was so bad that during January I had no will or drive to do almost anything because my depression was I want to say more or less at a peak and after I lost my job everything just settled in and I just kept feeding into my depression and anxiety I would sleep like 15 hours per day because my oop not my uber <laughs> My depression and anxiety had put me under such a state of mind I had to try and settle my anxiety by sleeping more and try and set my find my depression by sleeping more. And I had no drive to do almost anything. And it's important that you get help when you need it. And it's not weakness to ask for help. And I do understand the whole what's the point type of idea because you might think, what's the point? I've done this before. I mean, it's not like I'm going to get the help I need or what I'm looking for for improving or like I'll never get better. There's that feeling too. And I've been there and it, it's, it's hell, to be honest. It's just mental health can be hell. But the word in health is heal, so your health needs to be a healing process rather than a hurting process. Yeah, that's cheesy, but it's true. You need to be able to have a plan to get help. And you might just be talking with some friends or family saying, Hey, I've been feeling like this, and they talk things out with you, and that's nice, it's good, it helps. Because having someone be there to listen, it does help a lot. But you also need to understand is your friends and family are there, but they won't always be able to be there because they also have their life to work on or mental health issues that they can't handle, whether it be their own or yours. So what I can recommend to you is depending on where you are at, you can call a crisis line, and if you are at that point where you are in crisis, they will be able to help say, hey, uh, what is going on, and work out a plan so that you can get yourself possibly to a hospital to get therapy and medication started. And hospitals can offer well, within your budget or your benefits or whatever's going on financially, whatever the case may be with your medical coverage, they are generally able to work with you to do an inpatient service. And you might recall that I did an inpatient service about, well, now it would be in 2016. Was it 2016? No, it was 2017. So, yeah, 2017, I almost forgot. That was like way back last year around well around this time actually late February early March or maybe it, it was oh no it was late March so I was close but regardless of what I'm <laughs> talking about mental health is a process and it's progress so I'm getting a therapist or I'm working with a therapist to get myself in a better format for how I intend to be. And I will likely, of course, need a... You hear that? Those are pills! Those are my medications that I take nightly because my mental health, it needs medication. And mental health can involve a chemical imbalance because it's not all in your head but it really is. It's really a mix of your mental state and your physical state. Your physical estate can state, not estate. I mix words, but that's kind of with my own social anxiety. There is a mental state. Uh, jeez. I really shouldn't interrupt myself when I'm talking because I forget what I'm talking about. But 
I need to get my medication adjusted because I feel like I've grown tolerant to it over the past several months. And you might recall me saying I had no drive or will to do anything for January and it's been really a progressive month for me in February because I'm trying to get myself stronger and work with my mental health. My mental health kind of had the better of me for a good while and affected my ability to function and work. But I'm thankful that Uber Eats is able to help make up for what I'm missing while I'm getting the help I need so I can go wherever I need to go. But mental health is progress. It's not instant and even I was trying to look for like an instant solution like, hey, if I got any medication, I would be fixed. I'd be okay. And you know, that is kind of the hope when you are feeling a little bit desperate to get better, even if you don't see yourself as desperate. But it's important that you are able to get professional help yourself. And even if you don't feel like you need it, just check sometime. I mean, you might not even know because when I first was going to a therapist when I was in high school, might have been in college. It was towards the end of high school, more towards my college years, my early 20s, where I didn't think I needed mental help, but I found out I had different symptoms for different mental conditions. And it's progress to actually find an appropriate therapist that works with you how you like, but don't constantly keep turning everyone away just because you don't like them. Because getting to know your therapist, that's another process. And you might think, I don't want to go through the process of going through therapist after therapist. Well, it's either get help or don't. And if you don't, you might stay where you're at. But if you get help, you might change your perspective. You might not just change your perspective, but medically get better. Because my boyfriend Jitterbug Jive, aka Pissmoda, aka Baldumber Rat, or more simply Jack. Jack, you might have known about this through me or through him, but in 2016 he had a manic episode that eventually, after a month and a half of trying to get him help through a few different hospitals, he was diagnosed with Bipolar 1 disorder. And Bipolar 1 also includes depression. So depression, that can last any amount of time. And as someone with clinical depression, yeah, it depression can, in a mental affliction, last a long time. And for his depression, it lasted about year and a half, two years, and he's been finally, in the recent months, he's been able to, you know, I should probably point over from this way because I'm pointing to myself otherwise. He is a much better than how he used to be. He was just, in such, such a depression, he had little drive to do anything, but something I have been learning is that with doing things little by little, building a little on a little, you eventually get more and you can do more. And I've been learning this because when I have moments I need to vent, I have posted those vent pictures over to my just dash art.tumblr.com art blog. And over there, you'll probably see uh, two similar pictures that have to do with sadness and not wanting to live, but also not wanting to die. And those, yeah, those are heavy uh, subjects. Those are heavy ideas. But put, having an outlet can also help you grow on something you weren't expecting to grow with. I mean, 
you might not even want to do like art if you're an artist but if you just let yourself maybe do a sketch and maybe a sketch a week at the very least and that's what I was trying to do is like a sketch a week but I haven't been keeping up on it because <clears throat> there's a lot of stuff going on but I have been slowly getting myself back in an art rhythm so I can start doing more comic stuff again and I haven't done much for my comics since 2014, 2015. Yeah, we're going on the three year mark here, so. It's important also with your mental health that you are able to reflect on yourself so you can try and learn about why you are how you are. So, me being on my own, away from my parents, though I miss them, it has given me a chance to find out more about who I am and settle in, for better or worse, to try and get the help I need. And when I settled, finally, <clears throat> after moving and everything, you recall, or may recall, that I had highs and lows, and I haven't really been consistent on making content, but I will touch on that in a moment. The important thing is get help, get a little bit of help, do a little at a time, take baby steps, pretty much. So even if you aren't where you used to be, because there's also points where you might just totally drop from uh, wherever you were artistically or otherwise. And you might be trying to think, I used to be able to do this. I used to be able to have interest in this. I used to be able to do a lot of this for a, an extension of whatever point of time. But you have to be able to work with yourself to progress. And that's what I'm saying. Mental health is healing and progressing and learning. Because you'll also learn on your mental health and... You might not always get the news you want, but you need you get progress. You get some little factors, little notes here or there that might be able to help you in the long run. And if you learn to work with what you have, you can go anywhere. And right now, I'm trying to get stronger and, well, make some money so I can pay the rent. <laughs> but besides all of mental health and all that fun stuff. I'm going to try and work on getting more exercise because you may have noticed yeah, I put on a little bit of weight, but I'm still, by the numbers, healthy. Well, I'm overweight, but my heart's healthy, my numbers are... my blood numbers, I don't remember like, all the particular numbers like you get for a blood test, but I'm with all within the green range. I'm where I need to be. But... I could be better, physically, in my opinion. Though, the word better probably isn't appropriate because we are all about a body acceptance, but we don't want to, of course, bat someone away when they don't follow the idea of body acceptance. And, yeah, I am in agreement with saying, if you're happy with how you are, go right ahead, do what you do. But... I feel like I'm not where I want to be, and yeah, we have this whole standard set up that if you aren't doing this, 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 and this, you are completely unhealthy. No. Everyone is different, and everyone has to find their own niche. Everyone has to look for what works for them, but there are points, of course, where your health might be at risk and if your health is at risk you should get help because you might not need to go all the way to the goal line but at least making progress you can get yourself up to a lap to another lap to another lap to another lap and eventually get yourself to where you need to be but I'm not saying go out to exercise all the time but exercise does help mentally and physically it's been scientifically proven. And you can even Google it, yeah. And I won't probably have like all the articles like right off the bat, but in general, 
A little bit of exercise does a body good, as cheesy as that sounds. So, work aside, or exercise aside, sorry, I was about to jump to the next subject. I was thinking of working on streams, but due to work, there will be fluctuation in timing for these streams. So that might mean I'll stream on a Monday or not a Tuesday. I like stream Monday, but not a Tuesday. Sorry, I didn't mean to use the word or instead of but. Gotta love that word, but. But, due to work, there is some fluctuation, but there is flexibility. And I'm trying to see what works the best with Uber Eats to get the most of their uh, boost. And, oh yeah, that's something else. If you are doing Uber service, they have something called a boost, which boosts your fares, uh, whatever you make, by a multiplier. So, for example, like, what is it? 4 p.m. to 10 p.m., there is a 1.8 times multiplier on your fares. So you essentially make twice what you would if you were delivering late at night, and... Well... I think, actually, you know what? Even on late at night, there are different promotions that Uber has that gets you... <clears throat> A decent amount to pull in for the income but yeah if you ever want to do uber eats or uber there are incentives and of course these incentives are ongoing which is nice but anyways I need to ask uh, since my friend warden has suggested it you know warden the uh, writer or co-writer for ask time master on tumblr you know, that blue pony with the blonde hair, with the hourglass and drum cutie mark? That's him. Or you might have seen a few different blogs with Warden, who is a gray unicorn with purple and black hair. So, Warden's a pretty cool guy. He's got some sass, but he's pretty cool. And he was suggesting Thursday through Saturday for stream days, but I wanted to ask you... What do you want to have, or what works best for you for times you want to watch streaming? Are you also someone of the weekend variety, or are you more the type where if it's like any time during the week, you're okay? Let me know. Just say in the comments below if you, uh, when you would be more apt to watch a stream. So, yeah, that's a quick little question, but... I still have all the past streams that have not been posted on my hard drive and a few offline streams which contain some random moments in some games that I couldn't go live like for a moment for. Like in VR chat, you never know what you're gonna find in VR chat and if you have a friend with a bad idea, wink wink and their warden, there is a good chance there might be an occasional offline stream. And that means I'm literally offline, not doing a stream, but I'm still recording. So, there are secret streams. <laughs> so yeah. And I did want to make mention about that. I, yeah. I'm trying to use filler words and it's messing me up. So, with all the content that I do have on my hard drive, I am currently speaking with potential editors for the channels of Yesterday Rama and My Little Buggy. So, the door is still open for short term or long term editors. And I'm still trying. Oh, God. You know what? That's what I get for having McDonald's. That was a bad idea. Now I'm talking about weight and exercise. Oh, I'm doing great. So. The door is still open to short-term and long-term editors, but I'm not keeping the door too wide open because I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do with my videos. And this is besides vlogs, uh, any best ofs and stuff like that. Those will come uh, in time, but I am trying to see also what I want to do with my videos so I know what to tell the editors what to do. 
but even the editors might have ideas that I didn't think of, and that will be all the more beneficial to everybody. But yeah. The next thing I would be mentioning was going to be art, comics, and videos on a slow build, but I am doing my stuff with steps of progress. I do a little bit at a time. I try and set aside maybe, let's see, maybe one hour, two hours if I have time to do art or comic and video stuff. I will give myself a time rather than trying to do, you know, I'm trying to think of the exact way to describe this. But you know when you kind of procrastinate a little bit, but then you go like, Oh God, I need to do this thing today. And then you don't do it, and or you're stressing out about it, you're stressing yourself more out than you need to. Because it's okay if you don't constantly meet that daily deadline. Because if you just right off the bat come out of depression, set yourself daily deadlines, you're going to probably burn out pretty fast. And, yeah, that might, <laughs> that might be a problem. But, yeah, I burnt myself out a little bit fast, even when I was in depression, and trying to get things done. But, these past couple months, I've been trying to do a little at a time to get myself more engaged in what I used to do. And what I used to do was a lot more. But I need to learn and understand with myself, if I do a little bit at a time, it'll slowly grow. And if you do anything like you try and get over that procrastination anxiety, if you just do something for maybe 10 minutes, 11 minutes I think is the scientific number, you will get over that procrastination anxiety and more than likely get in the flow of what you were working on. So like if it was like a picture and you're thinking, Ugh, commissions, I don't want to do that. Ugh. If you get yourself started, even if you don't want to, and just take 10 minutes, 11 minutes, you might find yourself having gone through an hour of drawing or an hour of editing, whatever you might do. But regardless, you made the step to make the next step. And yeah, all those little cheesy bits of advice, they do help. But you have to just see where the pattern is and find yourself a pattern and make the progress. So, everything right now is on a slow build for me, but you know I have plenty of backlog stuff I want to get out and new ideas. But, I think it's time now to mention those newer things. But yeah, if you want to stay in touch with my art side, go to jest-art.tumblr.com. It's safe for work, so you don't have to worry about it being not safe for work, as I do have a not safe for work blog, which is actually for my not safe for work commissions. Yes, I do not say for work commissions, but I haven't done them in a long time because I couldn't even get myself to draw. So yeah, mental health, eh, yeah, it's a big thing. It kept me from doing anything in January and now I'm trying to catch up in February. So that aside, there will be a meeting of a character in a future video. Now some of you might have seen him or it, or them. I'm not sure how to identify this character, but since they're the extension of me, it kind of felt automatic to say he, even though the character is meant to be more of a manifestation of certain sides of me, but maybe also sides of you. But anyways, I'm not going to say too much, but if you've seen a past update video where I did drop a hint, I'll give you that hint. So maybe look forward to who this character is going to be. And they'll be more involved as they are 
a part of me in some important ways. But I, as much as I want to say it, I can't. Right. Not, not right away. But besides that, you probably might have expected that. If you are following my little buggy, I will be doing a... Yeah, you might be thinking, not another one. But hold on. I'm going to be doing an analysis um, segment. I can never find the right words right off the bat. I just always have to search for them. It's like my brain's on dial-up. So, I'm going to be doing an analysis segment, but not in the typical way that you usually see all the popular MLP brony endless doing. I'm planning to do it as a thing for when I have time. And there is an important subject recently that I would wanted to add a commentary to. And this segment is going to be called Buggy Analysis. Possibly, I might change the name. But regardless, Buggy Analysis, as the uh, code name is, will be going over a... Is, is going to be going over as an additional commentary to different videos or subjects. So, like, if uh, Silverquill said something, but I had my own commentary to add on to it, I would add my own analysis and maybe do it as a follow-up. So, maybe Buggy Analysis isn't the right name, but it's still a work in progress because the reason I'm trying to get into that analysis community is because some of you may be familiar with Toon Critic Y2K and his recent allegations with pedophilia. Now, I am not going to say forgive him right off the bat because forgiveness is earned. But you might be wondering what I am going to say about him as someone who was a friend with him for a few years since I had met him and worked with a few worked with him on a few different productions like uh, Benjo and Bilzui that was with a group of people where we did the voices for a redub that was uh, almost like an abridged version of uh, an episode but regardless I want to make my own input on the subject of Toon Critic Y2K and what's going on. I will say that for any actions he has taken, he needs to recompense for what he did. So if he affected anyone's life, he needs to... I, I don't know all the details right now because I would need to look more into it and I don't have everything off the top of my head, but <clears throat> for any actions he's taken, he needs to recompense for what he did, and he needs to get mental help because those who are pedophiles, they aren't bad people by a certain sense. By a general sense, they aren't bad people, but it's the actions they take which get them labeled as bad people. So... What Toon Critic needs is mental help and mental health. In mental health. I was saying and, sorry. But that would be something I would be going over, for example, for the buggy analysis segment. So, I'm not saying I forgive him because I don't yet. I need to see what comes of his actions before things change in my mind. And I might be still in reach with him, but I haven't really been sure what to say because you can either exile someone or help someone. And they also need to be willing to take the help too. So that will likely be something as a segment that will come out before the OC review segment I was originally planning. So, yeah, touchy subject, but I wanted to let you guys know, hey, there's likely going to be a different segment before the 
other analysis kind of segment. McToidy's OC reviews were going to be like an analysis segment on the OCs of people in whatever fandom community, but primarily MLP to start off. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice by talking so much. So, touchy subjects might be more the thing that I tend to touch on, if you forgive the pun, for the buggy analysis segment. So, I just wanted to address Toon Critic's situation because some people also might have known that, yeah, I also was a part of Toon Critic's Dr. Hooves video that, well, is now taken down. But, anyways. Progress, life, mental health, is progress. I'm trying to think of a good way to just sum this all up. Life, mental health, and just things in general are a process in progress. So I think I've spent more time than I usually do on these videos, but you know, I haven't really said much in a while, and I wanted to kind of catch up with you guys, so let me know how you're doing, and when you guys want to watch streams in the comments, or, well, if you have any suggestions on what I can go over, maybe, for my future segments, let me know. But regardless, thanks for watching, you are awesome, and if I don't see you, you have a good morning, a good afternoon, a good evening, and a good night, and always... Praise the Spurple. So yeah, thanks for watching. I am Justin Arama. See you next time. Love you. <laughs>